How's it going, you guys? AZ Plower 21 back again with another episode of our UFC save in WMMA5. And today we have Holly Holm taking on Marina Moknatkina. We are coming off of our last pay per view, UFC 296 Jones versus Rockich. John Jones, still the light heavyweight champion and the heavyweight champion. They pulled in $40 million on pay per view in front of over 30,000 fans in New York. I have no idea where that could have been. Surely, like a small baseball stadium or something like that i have zero idea um if you're watching this video you might have seen a couple videos that i posted recently i last weekend went to las vegas with my buddy joseph and we went to go watch the masvidal versus covington fight very fun uh lots of fun uh getting a being able to see the pay-per-view with my buddy uh, i posted the walkouts for the two of them that's it's a weird thing for me but the walkouts and like the music aspect of it is always like one of my favorite parts of the UFC, like right before the main event. You know what I mean? It's weird, but that's just one of my little, you know, things that I like. It's the same for like pro wrestling. Like the entrance music is like a big part of the reason why I like it. Um, but anyways, they did big numbers, 40 million in pay-per-view. I mean, if you want to talk about finances, $30 million in profit. I, the only time that we haven't profited in the calendar year was in January, and that's when I spent $220 million on all of our pay-per-view broadcasters. And we've practically made that money back. We have $343 million in cash fluid uh, when we had $150 million back then, so that's nearly $200 million that we've made up. That $220 million difference, we've almost paid that fully off. You know, we're a cash fluid company at this point. And one thing that I noticed if you want to see at the bottom, like you can't really see my mouse here, but our children companies are bringing in like $3 million a month. That's $3 million in profit that WEC and Invicta are bringing in to us every month. That is insane. That is insane. Um, so I have no idea. <sighs> I, I mean, we have, Money's not even an object at this point. There's no reason in worrying about it, but we have money. So I can start giving out some big bonuses if I want. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Uh, finance, bonuses. Yeah. You know, let's go ahead and do that. Fight of the night bonus. We'll make that 100k. And performance bonus. We'll also make that 100k. These guys deserve to get paid. Now, as far as the, their salaries go, that I can't do anything about because... Uh, the game, for whatever reason, just undervalues these guys. I mean, let me go to... Uh, let me just look up someone random. Okay, so Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. What kind of contract is he on? He's making $3,100 a fight. In real life, in the UFC, I'm pretty sure the minimum for, like, a, a crappy fighter is, like, 10000 10000 So 10000 to show, 10000 to win. Um, in game, that's not the case at all. They're getting paid, like, $3,100 hundred dollars for a crappy fighter uh let's see a very popular fighter so minimum name value low level or yeah high level national that's fine so aj mckee low level international you think he'd be getting some big money twenty eight thousand a fight that's not a lot in terms of in terms of what they should be getting paid now that's twenty eight like listen i make over twenty eight thousand dollars a year and some of these guys are only fighting once or twice a year. That's not cool. I mean, let's take a look here. We can even see. Uh, that was in 2023. Uh, that was in 2023. That was in 2022. And he has a fight set up for the super lightweight title. Um, so that's three fights. He's won all of them. So that's about 56. So 56, 100. So he's uh, he's doing well. He's He's got about $160,000 this year in terms of his winnings and things like that we have to take into account one taxes take off like twenty thousand paying his coaches and uh, managers and whatnot maybe like another ten percent take off another fifteen thousand he's really only taking home like ninety thousand dollars a year and that's a high level this guy's fighting for a title fighter um let's take a look at someone who's high level international as popular as they can be there's not a lot of them. Um, Frank Mir. So how? So Frank Mir, he's done very well for himself since he's come back at 44 years old. How much is he making? 
He's making $79,000 a fight. That's base pay. <coughs> so if he wins a fight, he's getting about $160,000 uh, in base pay. Now, there's the bonuses and stuff like that for if he appears on a pay-per-view, if he appears in a main event, things like that. But his base pay, $160,000 for a guy who brings in a buttload of money probably, it's not a lot. We'll take a closer look at that at the end of the video um, when we get to the finances screen. But for now, we have Holly Holm taking on Marina Mocknatkina. We are making our way towards next week, UFC 297, McGregor versus Mendez 2. So Conor McGregor going to go at it against Chad Mendez in the featherweight division, dropping back down to featherweight. Uh, Piotr Jan taking on Tom Dukenwa, uh, Michael Venom Page, Mike Chiesa. Fabian Edwards, Rafael Lovato Jr., Gilbert Burns versus Robbie Lawler. Should be a good one, that pay-per-view. Our next pay-per-view after that, the Super Lightweight Grand Prix Finals, and that is the final pay-per-view that will have title fights on it because our next pay-per-view that's going to have title fights on it is going to be UFC 300. We don't know when that's going to be. So after UFC, 3, uh, after UFC 299, um, we're going to stop booking pay-per-views for a while until I can be sure that nearly every title can be defended now that's going to be hard because we have some champions who are injured we have some that there are interim championships but i'm going to just try my best to make make almost every championship on the line um for that card that's going to be not only ufc 300 but i think it might be episode 300 of our or episode 200 maybe i have no idea definitely it, it definitely won't be it definitely won't be because there's way too many cards going on before that um because this is 292 i believe but anyways i'm getting off topic we have fights going on holly holm and marina mock kina let's get into it unless let me just make sure yep let's get into it taking place in italy of all places marvin vittori not on the card i wanted him to be but he was injured our first prelim has Corey Tate taking on Odie Osborne in the Bantamweight division. And it's Odie Osborne getting the submission victory. He's 6-3 in the UFC now. Demarion Cunningham taking on... What was that name? Kerbin Gadjiev. Gadjiev is a massive favorite and with good reason. TKO victory in round number three. Shamil Gamzatov taking on Reiner DeRitter in the light heavyweight division. De Ritter, the favorite, De Witter gets the win. 3-1 and one he is now in the UFC. And he wants to fight Antigulov. Uh, Brennan Leeser taking on Mahmoud Muradov in the middleweight division. And it's Muradov getting the TKO victory over the 36-year-old South African. Uh, Nikolai Alex Sakin taking on Alan A.J. Johnston in the 170 division. And it's Alex Sakin getting the win here today. 31-7-1 is now his record. Marcin Pionke taking on Marif Parayev in the 175 division. Pretty evenly fought contest, and it's Pionk winning the fight within a minute of round number one. He might have just gotten himself $100,000. Uh, Lukas Shavushki taking on Steven Braveheart Ray in the lightweight division. Pretty good contest, and it's Steven Ray who gets the TKO victory in round number one. Coming off a loss over Gary Tonin, but he gets it done. Koji Takeda taking on Jalen Turner. I just saw Jalen Turner this past weekend uh, get a big win, and he gets another one here. Knockout over Koji Takeda. He's now 8-2 in his UFC career. Only a loss to Davi Ramos in this save. He really should be fighting someone ranked next. All right, next match, Jacob Weeklosh taking on Danny Kingad. Uh, Danny Kingad was at one point a very good Bantamweight prospect. 1-0 here in the UFC. Make that 2-0 as he TKOs uh, Jacob Weeklash in round number one. You can see coming in from one championship where he was on a three-fight not winning streak. That is tough. Uh, Siri Kondo taking on Manjit Kolakar in our final prelim fight. Kondo a big favorite in the 125 division, and it is Manjit Kolakar who gets the unanimous decision victory. First main card fight, and it's Yancey Medeiros taking on the Irish Dragon Paul Felder. 
Felder, number 20, lightweight in the division, coming off two losses. On the other side, you have Madero's number 25 in the division, coming off a win over Rafael Nunes. And it's the Irish Dragon, Paul Felder, getting the decision in this one. He wants to fight, I believe that was Alexander Hernandez, not Fluffy Hernandez. Ariane Lipsky taking on Marina Maroche. I saw Maroche win this past weekend, so good for her. A lot of stuff going on over in Ukraine where she's from, so I hope she's doing okay. I believe Lipsky's fought for a title. Not our title. Or maybe she was like a win away from fighting for a title. Uh, losing to Robertson probably prevented that for her. Uh, but she's had herself a good career thus far, uh, taking on Marina Morose. And Lipsky gets the knockout in round number two. Uh, Thomas Narcoon taking on Modeskis Bukowskis. Narcoon, 4-2 and two in the UFC, coming off consecutive losses in the top ten. That's tough. Facing off against Bukowskis, who's on a four-fight winning streak, the last one being over Ryan Spann. And it's Bukowskis, who I believe is also a prospect in the UFC right now, who gets the win via unanimous decision. Five-fight winning streak now for him. And you have to wonder. He might be ranked after beating Narcoon. Jeremy Kennedy taking on Charles DeBronx Oliveira in the 155 division. Not sure if this is the co-main event, but it's a good fight. Jeremy Kennedy, 8-3 in the UFC. Number 13 in the lightweight division. Coming off a loss to Moicano. DeBronx Oliveira on the other side. Current champion in real life. Coming off a loss to Gamrot. That's not an easy loss. He's lost to Gamrot twice, as a matter of fact. And Kennedy gets it done via decision. Now 23-5 in his career. Co-main event time, and it is the Bantamweights, the ladies. Norma Dumont, 2-4 and four in the UFC. She's on a two-fight losing streak. I believe this was meant to be someone else. <coughs> I can't remember exactly who it was supposed to be, but I'm pretty sure that Kaliso Sangsorn was supposed to be fighting up. Not sure, but Maknat Kina has beaten Sangsorn, who's in the main event. Uh, she's a big underdog, although I think Sangsorn's going to win. Yeah, I believe I believe it's going to be Sangsorn who gets the win. She does not. Submission victory for Norma Dumont in round one. A big win for her. The third, just the third of her UFC career. That is insane. Had a big run in Invicta, became the champion, got a couple consecutive victories, lost to Ladd and Maknat Kina, and the big win over Kaliso Sangsorn here today for Norma Dumont. We've arrived at our main event of the evening. It's the Preacher's Daughter Holly Holm taking on Marina Maknat Kina. Going to go over both ladies in a little bit of detail. Holm, I'm surprised, has not retired yet. 41 years old. Um, she's been losing. And usually when they reach 40 and they start losing, irregardless of if they're winning streak or not, they usually just retire. Um, coming off a loss to Macy Chieson before that, wins over Aldana and Felicia Spencer. Also a loss to Marion Renault, which was not a good loss for her. And she got 30-27 too, so yikes. On the other side, you've got Marina Maknat Kina, 35 years old. Um, on a winning streak, Kaliso Sangsorn and Norma Dumont beat literally both ladies that were just in the co-main event. Lost to Aspen Ladd. If it weren't for Aspen Ladd beating her, she might be fighting for a title at some point um, in that little area. It's our main event. Let's go ahead and get it started. Holly Holm is the favorite. Um, boxing versus Sambo. Sal Diamato is judging, so that is always scary. little touch of the gloves. I can't imagine uh, Holly Holm losing on the feet. I'd imagine it, there'd have to be a couple takedowns in order for it to be a win for Mach Nat Kina. And it does look like she's grappling with her about two minutes in. Halfway through round number one. Looking to get in close. There she goes for a takedown and she gets it. Half guard for Mach A minute and a half to do some damage to Holly Holm into the final minute of the round. A couple punches. A little bit of damage, but time is up. Not Mach Nakina up around as we head into round number two immediately gets a takedown home pulls guard i wonder if she's gonna just try to lay and pray and beat her or if she's gonna go for some sort of submission uh you know getting a little bit of ground and pounding home stands up out of guard she's trying to get her back to the ground catching a kick halfway through round number two 
Slams her shoulder into Mach Machina. Pulls her in a guard. <clears throat> I just downloaded the update for uh, WMMA 5 after about, what, three months that I've needed to. Um, so it's interesting to see if there's any little changes to the fight engine or not. Time expires. Round two is over. Machnat Kina up by two rounds, apparently. Holm taking the initiative first. Big left to the body. Misses. Tries to scoop her up for a slam. Pulling guard. Looking for a leg lock. Ooh, Machnat Kina almost getting a leg lock in. Round three of the 41-year-old in danger. Another leg lock opportunity. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee calls a stop to the contest at three minutes, five seconds of the third round. Your winner by submission due to a leg lock is Marina Machnat Kina. Now in real life, I believe Machnat Kina fights for PFL. Not 100% sure, but this is a huge win for her in a main event. Good for her. Only about 3,500 showed up to Italy for this one. That is okay. We love our fans either way. We charge them a lot of money to come to the fights. Now, fight of the night. Were there any fantastic fights or great fights? Looks like the women's fight was. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and give it to the ladies. Any first round finishes that get $100,000. Reiner DeRitter, 22 seconds. Marcin Pionk, a minute. Anything else? Norma Dumont. Uh, yeah, let's give her 100K as well. Love to see it. Holly Holm takes $335,000. This is what I mean. She just won in a main event, and Marina Maknakina is taking home $120,000, essentially. Norma Dumont is only taking home $108,000 because she got a bonus. Otherwise, she'd only be taking home $8,000. Insane. Uh, Marcin Pionk, $108,000. Reiner DeRitter, $103,000. These guys are not making any money. Um, but that's going to do it for us. The next time I see you guys will be for McGregor versus Mendez. I'll see you guys then. Have a good one.